All right, I'm excited to dive into this drawing tutorial for you guys. We're going to be drawing these delightful blueberries. I love the colors in here. So we'll be drawing them today and then painting them in a future video, which should be a lot of fun. This color, is, or this color, this photo is on Unsplash by Ty Fink. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I will have it linked down below. So because it's on Unsplash, it is available um, to the public domain, which means that there's not, I'm not going to be like slammed with any copyright issues. Um, okay. So like I said, we're going to see how this goes. My kids are sleeping. They've been so sick and I'm still deal dealing with a little bit of morning sickness. Um, so we're going to see how much we can get done. Let's dive into this drawing. I'm going to enlarge it because I really want to play with some of the color variations in here. Like you can see, there's a little bit of this purple here. We've got some reflection of the blue here. So I'm kind of trying to decide what sections I'm going to take. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to take these guys here and I might add another blueberry here. And then I'm going to take some of this greenery here and just kind of transplant that down. So I'm going to start with the blueberries, but leaving enough room for some greenery up here and try and get these shapes. The nice thing is they're fairly round, but they're not perfect circles. Okay, so let's, if I want the greenery to go off to the side here, then I want everything else to come here. Okay, so let's just kind of sketch out how things are gonna go. I kind of like this one here. This little guy and this one. This is about where I have this main blueberry here, our largest one. This next one, they're touching, I'm gonna have them overlap a little bit more just cause it makes it a little bit more visually pleasing. Let's see. So don't draw your sketch this dark, just in case that wasn't clear. We got our little one here and I am adjusting the placement. I have a gap here um, just cause I don't like kissing edges, which we talked about in one of the drawing videos I did um, earlier this year, which I'll have, I'll try to remember to link down below for you guys. Um, I don't like kissing edges. I like things to either overlap or have some good space between them. So sometimes that means I'm going to exaggerate things and other times uh, that means that I just leave things out. Okay, so I'm just kind of figuring out overall placement for these guys. Okay, there's like a little leaf here kind of comes down. Again, it's just kind of kissing here. So I'm going to exaggerate it and let it overlap on this guy just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm kind of going to imagine that this stem section comes out here. And then let's draw this leaf so it's coming out. Might be a little too much. If I want to fit this one in, which I do. And I'm going to... So he's cut off here, So, but I can imagine it's probably just a, kind of a quick line here. Get a little bump, little tip, and I'm just following the contour. I'm gonna move this section down here cause I'm running out of room and I am allowed to cheat like that. These interior lines are gonna be lighter. Okay, so we've got this kind of sketched out. Now we're going to refine. Um, I just really want to make sure that I'm drawing just what I can see here. Um, I'm, I am making adjustments along the way. We've talked about that a little bit. I'm, as an artist, I'm allowed to do that. It's called artistic prerogative. And it's one of the best things that we have at our disposal. Um, but it does mean that um, sometimes things change throughout this process. 
So I'm gonna lighten everything with my kneaded eraser quickly. And I'm just using an HB pencil. So this is my favorite pencil. We've talked about it many times before, the Faber-Castell TK4600. I've used it in pretty much every tutorial for the last many, many years. Um, and I'm using HB lid. So I'll have this photo I'm working off of linked in the description. So you'll be able to use it and um, kind of reference it as you are working and even as I'm working. Um, I'm gonna start with the largest one because it's kind of in the foreground and everything else will kind of be tucked in behind it. So it's one of those things that if I can get this guy right, everything else is a little bit smoother. It's got a little bit of a flattened edge over here. Very subtle. And if it looks too weird, like if it's something that it just looks not right because it's a blueberry, it's supposed to be kind of rounded. Well, then make it more rounded. You're allowed to cheat to make something look more intentional. Now, if I'm moving a little too quickly or the things that I'm talking about are just a little bit too fast for where you're at with your drawing um, expertise, your drawing journey, um, then I recommend taking my free flower drawing challenge. Um, most of, if you want something really in depth, then my full course is more, um, is more what you're looking for. But if you're just, it's just a little bit over your head, you need this a little bit slowed down, my free flower drawing mini course is the way to go, um, where it'll give you some of the tips, some of the things that I'm talking about here, where we're drawing what we're seeing, certain you know interior lines are different weights um, stuff like that that is all part of that flower drawing mini course and it's a great free way to just get a little bit more of oomph to your drawing and in your experience overall i'm sure most of you have already taken it but if you haven't i'll try and remember to link that as well i'm just slowly going around this section of the blueberry. I don't know what this is called. Is it like the, I don't know why I want to call it like the eye of the blueberry. It probably is not what it's called. If you know what it's called, <laughs> let me know in the comment section below before I just start making things up. So, and the thing is, I am constantly looking back at my reference image. I'm constantly following these different lines, trying to capture these details and understand what it is that I'm seeing. This is tucked slightly behind that. So we'll just help it finish off here. I am gonna go in with my kneaded eraser and just clean this up just a touch. So I was very wrong on placement there. There's a little bit of an overlap there. So let's we can capture that. All right, and we're just moving one piece at a time. So we've got another imperfect circle. It points ever so slightly towards this section of the blueberry. I'm gonna get this guy out of the way.
Well, admittedly, I've seen prettier blueberries, but I'm going to add some light detailed lines. See these guys, I don't know if you can see this, coming out of this blueberry. I'm just going to kind of mark where those are so that if I want to when I'm painting, I don't have to kind of figure out where they are or how to place them. If I decide I want to add them. Okay, so now we're working on this last blueberry here before we move on to the fun stuff. What time is it? Oops, I'm running out of time. Surprised nobody's woken up yet. I think I drew it too long, sketched it out too long. So we're gonna go out a little bit more. Maybe not. Maybe in my head we're going out more. A little more squared off. And this is pointed more this way. Which, because the stem is here, I actually think it would be pointed more this way. So I'm just going to adjust it. Uh, the hardest part will be when we are going in with the watercolor and the shadows and stuff. That will be a little trickier because we'll have to use our imagination a little bit and use our put on our thinking caps. It's a lot like math, <laughs> um, which in some ways is good because you can kind of follow a formula and in other ways that makes it harder for those of us who don't love math as much. And then it means that the interior line would be here. And this one, I can kind of see this little bit. It's almost belly button-esque. All right, now up to our bark. And I'm still not pushing hard. I'm using a fairly, well, it's HB, so it's kind of like right there in the middle. Um, usually if I'm working on watercolor paper, or at least when I was first starting out, I would often use softer lead, like a B lead, so that I wouldn't scar my paper. Um, I'm not as cautious now, though I probably should be since I have to <laughs> draw this a little bit darker, but it's gonna be okay. And Sorry, I am kind of just making this structure up for the stem. Just with what I know about stems. I can't see how the leaves come out, how they are attached. You want to look for, ah, here we go. There's a little bit of, it juts out just a touch. Um, so you want to look for that junction and see how you can make it work. Make it make sense with your own. All right, well, apparently I charged everything but forgot to empty my memory card. So I'm not sure where it cut off, but we're back. <laughs> and we're going to finish up this uh, pair of leaves here. Um, I'll try and, when I'm editing, fill in anything uh, significant that was messed, that was missed. Sorry about that. Um, let me pull up the reference image. There we go. So I did probably one thing that was missed. I did shorten this a little bit. Originally I had it out a little bit farther. I think I want to have a little bit more presence on this leaf. And so I'm going to 
bring this around, capture this detail that I picked out earlier. Down. And then close it. And I'm going to lighten this because it's in the background, so it should be a little bit lighter than it's looking. I think I'm going to add another leaf in here. It's like I don't hate it, but it just feels off a little bit to me. So I'm going to bring in a leaf lightly kind of in the background here. I'm just going to allow it to kind of come off as though it was from the back side of this stem. Lightly draw just through this to make sure that the positioning is correct. I'm going to add in a little imperfection here. And then let's go up this way. Okay, and just a quick erase of those kind of guiding lines. And I'm a little happier with the way that it just feels a little bit more balanced to me. Um, so that is where we're going to stop now. Let's zoom you out just a touch again. So that's where we're going to stop. Um, and we will watercolor this and may, may add a couple bla uh, blaries. Oh my goodness. English is just not my strength right now, apparently. We're probably going to add a couple more berries kind of softly in the background here. We'll talk about how to do that. Um, but the big thing I want to do is really play with the color. And so we'll have a lot of fun with that with the next video. So I'm just going to sign this real quick. And I am so excited to paint this with you. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.